He's been living on the street since he was nine years old when his father shot him in the stomach and left him for dead. On the streets of Hollywood, he's known as Tweaky Dave. He's now 19, a junkie, a former male prostitute, and he's dying from leukemia. Dave, go back to when you were nine years old. Tell us what happened. My dad was selling dope. This is back in Texas. And uh, I walked in the house at the wrong time. He was bagging up dope. I had a couple customers in the room. And I was like any other nine-year-old kid. I kicked the door open, ran in the house. And they say, I know I'm laying on the floor with blood coming all out of me. And he's walking away going. This is your father. Your father yeah, shot dad. you. Yeah. At the age of nine, you were out selling dope. Yeah. When did that start? I started selling dope for him. I was like seven. And you did it because Dad said, go out and do this? Well, yeah, but I mean, at that point, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I mean, you know, it was like the family business, sort of. Okay, your dad shoots you at the age of nine. He runs out of the trailer. You're lying there. The next thing you know, what? I'm in the hospital because the hooker that lived next door took me to the hospital. Okay, now what happens when you're in the hospital, when, you, when you're finally repaired? Well, I decided I don't want any more of that life. I mean, and I had already had it. So I split, went to Hollywood. I was going to be a rock star. You're nine years old. Didn't the authorities say, well, we'll take you home, we'll put you in some place? Well, they put me in placements. They locked me up, and I ran away, and they locked me up, and I ran away. I mean, at nine years old, I wasn't officially a criminal. I hadn't done anything wrong but survive. I didn't trust anybody enough at that point in my life. Tell me about the life on the street. I've done just about everything you can imagine. Actually, you can't imagine some of the things I've done to survive. Such as? I've been in the prostitution since I was 10 years old. I mean, when I say prostitution, I mean... I mean exactly that. I mean, I was having sex with guys when I was 10 years old. The first time, what you knew what you were doing was different, wrong. Yeah, I knew. I mean, guilt, guilt, guilt just about killed me half my life. I mean, leukemia and drugs aside, guilt will kill me faster than anything else will. But I had to survive. I mean, I trusted no one. I trusted nothing. And at least, if I had sex with somebody for money, I had something to eat. Were there no other options? Did you go to, did you go to a, a, a school, a local church, some authority? Did you go to a police officer and say, look, I have no home, I have no money? The police look at, look, look at runaways basically as outlaws or, or, as, or as criminals. I wasn't a criminal. You know, I mean, when you walk by a cop and you're 10 years old and they put handcuffs on you because you're outside. Well, wouldn't the first question, a cop comes up to you, you're 10 years old, he puts handcuffs, wouldn't he say, where's your mom, where's your dad? Yeah. And as soon as you told the story, wouldn't they then take you to some kind of a home for young people? No, half the time they'll take you to a juvenile hall and lock you up. And I don't want to be locked up. I didn't then. What do you feel guilty about? What do I feel guilty about? Being 10 years old and having sex with men. Because, I, I mean, I, at that point, I didn't know whether I was gay, straight, bi. I didn't even know what that meant. When did you finally stop? When I was 16. What made you stop? AIDS. Not that I have AIDS, not that I don't. The fear of it. The fear of AIDS. Watching two of my best friends die within six months. Watching my girlfriend totally wig out because her best friend died. I couldn't deal with it anymore. So what did you, how did you live then? Hand to mouth, man. I mean, I ate out of dumpsters. I sold dope. But, and I'm not a hardcore criminal. When I say I'm not a hardcore criminal, I mean, I can't go out and rob people. That's just not my nature. I know a lot of people that do it. But to me, that ain't right. Now, I mean, I'm not justifying anything. So how do you get money now? You say drugs, but how do you get money to sell the drugs? Panhandle, whatever it takes. A you mentioned top. before you leukemia. You have leukemia? Yeah. Are you receiving treatment? No. No help? None whatsoever, which is my own choice. Why? Hospitals scare the hell out of me. 
Not much scares me anymore, but hospitals scare the hell out of me. Worse than streets? Much. They're not going to mug you in a hospital. They're not no, going to take away people die in you. hospitals. I mean, people die, die on the streets, too. I know, I know. Yeah, they die in the streets. But it's all I know now. What are you angry about? Are you angry? I'm frustrated, man. It's more, like, built-in, just anxiety or something. I don't know what the word is. I don't well, you have reason to be. I mean, we can all listen to your story and say, boy, if anyone has reason to be upset, to be anxious, uh, to be in despair, you do. You've, had, you've lived a lifetime in a few years, but it doesn't mean that that's your sentence. You know, there's a chance to turn it around, and, and I guess if I'm sitting here listening to your story, I'm saying, damn, I'm going back to L.A. tomorrow, and the first thing I'm going to do is walk into a hospital and say, do what you can, fix me up. I'd like to turn my life around because there's a better life out there. You've told stories that most people only see in movies. You don't have to live like that. You're a bright guy. I mean, it isn't like you've got handicaps that, 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 that don't permit you to live life to its fullest. You can do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a quitter. It's not like I'm giving up anything. I mean, to survive 10 years in Hollywood. I, my, I, I wouldn't have lasted a day. I'm, I'm sitting here, and there's a side of me that respects what you've been through, how you survived. But to have those skills to survive on the street, but and then all... to say, I'm not going to go to a doctor and deal with my leukemia, and I'm not going to try and make it in an honest living, that's stupid. You've got the skills to do hey, I'm it. I'm not saying I don't want to make it in an honest living. I mean, I just, uh, I just took the GED trip and uh, passed it, which surprised the hell out of me. You know, you got a story to tell, and if you, if you decide that the only reason you want to beat this leukemia and the only reason you want to survive is because you've lived through it, you've got a story to tell that could help a lot of other kids, yeah, wouldn't that that's, be... That, see, that, that's the only reason I think I keep going, man, because I keep meeting these kids that are like 12 years old, 11 years old, 8 years, eight years old. I know an 8-year-old chick out there. I don't want to see them have to go through 10 years of what I've been through. And I can tell you stories, man, that was... They, they scare me. Tell me. I can take the story, at least. I found a chick in a dumpster one night. I think it was a girl. I mean, I, I didn't take her to the body apart. But, like, her arm was chopped off and, or cut off, I don't know. And uh, blood all over the place. It's better and it happens all the time. And this is in Beverly. This was in a Beverly Hills dumpster. This wasn't in a dumpster in like Watts, or you know, in some cheap sleazy alley. This was in Beverly Hills. What, if you find that in Beverly Hills, what are you gonna find in Holly? You know, in downtown L.A. Somewhere, right now, there is a 12-year-old I suspect watching this show, absolutely in despair at home. Maybe yeah. is being abused by mom and dad, or either or, or both and um, saying, I want to leave. I got to get out of this. This home is dangerous. Nobody here loves me. It's terrible. Uh, why don't you look into a camera and talk just to that kid right over there. Tell that kid who's getting ready to leave. What would you tell that kid? Hey, man, it's rough. I know it's rough where you're at. Well, find a cop or to hell with cops. Find a preacher. Find somebody older you trust. Find a high school kid that you trust. Find somebody that gives a damn, because there's somebody out there that does. And lay it down for him. Tell him what's up. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom, you have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.